Just a little overview for those of you who don't know Thompson & Morgan. Um, best known, our group's best known for the Thompson & Morgan brand. We sell seeds and plants to the home gardener. We also have three other brands. First of all, Van Muen, which is a specialist bulb company, which we purchased back in 2004. We then uh, diversified a little with Rainbow Flowers, which is a gift brand selling cut flowers, perfumes, and such like to the grey market. And then finally, in 2010, we added the Vernon Geranium Nursery, kind of as it says, Geranium Specialists. We've worked with Abacus for, where are we, 10 years now. Um, and to start off with, that was just a cold data and reactivation uh, area that we work with. So back in 2009, we identified that we had four challenges that we were facing. First of all, we didn't have a unified view of our customers. We were operating several brands and we had numerous sources of data, um, which obviously it meant that we didn't have a single customer view. We wanted to have direct access to all of our data. Um, we wanted to be able to make our own selections, uh, get into our data and interrogate it ourselves, and just generally have a little bit more of a hands-on approach. We felt that we were probably over-mailing a little. Uh, we had a huge wealth of data, but because we didn't have a single view of our customers, it meant that we couldn't make the most of it to try and reduce some of our mailing volumes. And finally, uh, we were looking at our analysis uh, on a single mailing uh, perspective. We've got multiple brands and we wanted to take a season long view um, so that we could really see how the campaign was working in its totality. And not only that, but also factor in all of the other activities we were doing, newsletter activity, uh, reader offers, sell off the page. We weren't able to do that. So in 2010, we decided that Abacus looked like the best fit for us and uh, started working together to try and help achieve some of these goals. Thank you. So uh, just to give you a quick overview of, of the uh, areas we, we sort of uh, started to work with TNM to, to address these uh, problems. Um, first off, uh, we partnered with a business called Cubase um, to create a single customer view. Uh, we implemented a fast stats and web interface to give them that access to the data. Um, and to help them reduce uh, waste and improve their targeting, uh, we implemented uh, a solution uh, which we call our license score, which we're gonna talk about in a bit more detail. And uh, we started to run very tailored matchbacks, which really gave them that uh, season long view of activity across all of the, uh, the brands. So just to go and expand on all of those areas a little further, um, first off, as I say, we partnered with a company called Cubase, who are um, specialists in building single customer views. Um, so it was really key to create the platform to bring in those sort of four siloed data sets and give them a view of customer activity across those, uh, those four brands. Um, so that allows them to update uh, the data on a, on a weekly basis. So they've got a fresh view of uh, their, their customer activity across all the brands. They can um, bring in uh, internal and external suppression files. Um, certainly the key for Abacus was having a platform that we could include um, our uh, license score solution so they could use that as within their, alongside their segmentation. Um, and also it's plugged into their uh, existing email platform so they can create very tailored email messaging and then obviously communicate on a one-to-one -one basis with their customers. Um, the FastStats front end gives them direct access to the data for reporting and analysis. So that's probably a tool that many of you are familiar with. Um, and also there was a bespoke web interface which um, gives them uh, access to um, update contact records, mailing preferences, etc. And that's actually used within the, uh, the TNM call centre. Um, so to look at what solution did we want to use to help them improve the targeting, there's four key areas that we can work with uh, our clients on. Um, the first of those is house file modelling. So this is where we build um, propensity models to create ready-to-mail files, um, net of your own customer selections, um, 
to really help you find the best of the rest customers that you're not selecting for your mailing. And this is run on a really campaign by campaign ad hoc basis. We also have a uh, campaign 360 solution, which is a fully managed solution where we actually run a full client segmentation, um, campaign output files, and run that all the way through to uh, post campaign reporting. And those are more sort of abacus hosted solutions. Um, but we were really looking more at what we could deliver to TNM so they could run this in house. So the first area we could look at was data tagging, and this is where we deliver um, aggregated variables um, appended to a client house file, um, looking at RFM variables really across our 21 merchandising categories. Um, and you're going to hear a bit more about this later on uh, with Christian and uh, JD Williams. But the solution we went for was um, license score. So really this is an extension of the house file modeling we were already working with TNM on. Um, and this is where we essentially pi apply a propensity score across the whole TNM file, um, looking at um, a buyer reactivation, inquiry reactiv activation, um, and allows them to use that in-house with their own segmentation. Thank you, Mark. So what's the um, license score? Uh, as Mark said, it's based on a propensity model, uh, which can leverage uh, quite a wide uh, range of variables. We start with 5,000 5, plus uh, transaction-derived uh, variables, which really record what your customer um, has done across the 500 brands we have on the Alliance. On top of that, we have your own sort of RFM variables. So we look at um, how recently the customer has purchased from you, how much did the customer spend, but also in which season uh, did the customer you know, buy the last time, um, and for example, which channel uh, did they uh, purchase through. And on top of this, we've got some um, lifestyle and demographic uh, data that we, can, uh, that we source from um, CACI. Uh, it's about uh, 100 variables uh, and include things like uh, age, income, um, presence of children, age of children, interests, uh, and so forth. And that really gives us a complete you know, picture of, of uh, the customer. Um, we built uh, the models using a simulation methodology which really means that we can create purpose-built uh, models. So for example, if uh, we're trying to uh, reactivate customers, we looked for customers that lapsed first and then reactivated and used those um, as responders uh, for our models. Uh, and that really helps to sort of maximize uh, the performance uh, of the models. So when is a uh, lesson score good for you? Um, it's good for you if you need a single indicator of um, customer activity. So if you want, uh, say, a ready uh, to use uh, ranking system, uh, this is a good solution for you. Um, it's also a good solution if you want to continue to manage uh, the data selections uh, in-house. Um, a segment is very uh, easy to load uh, to your own systems, and it's also very easy to use. So you don't need a statistician to use it. You just need somebody sort of data savvy enough to you know pick up um, some um, customers based on uh, on score. Um, and it's also the right solution for you if you want to continue to use um, your own uh, segmentation. So the, the scores and the segments we provide uh, can be overlaid to your existing uh, segmentation. Um, but you can also use them, say, sequentially. So you can do your selections first, and then uh, with what is left, um, you, you can sort of, um, you use the scores. Uh, to, to select. Um, looking into uh, sort of um, what uh, sort of we do uh, for, uh, for Thompson & Morgan, um, as Vicky said earlier, uh, it's a multi-brand 
uh, group. So we've got um, different pools of data uh, that we can use to uh, support um, sort of marketing initiatives. So you have um, the existing um, uh, TNM customers um, in the red bucket uh, there. So we rank them one to 10 um, using our reactivation score and that's how we can pick them up. Uh, but you also have customers that uh, have purchased from other brands uh, in the group, but have not purchased uh, from uh, TNM just yet. Um, the fact that they've purchased from other brands doesn't necessarily make them a good prospect for, for TNM. Uh, for example, um, say Rainbow customers, um, um, say are overrepresented um, amongst the older uh, generations. So some of them uh, will not be actively gardening anymore. Um, some others you know, will. So we can use the cross-sell uh, model segments to pick up um, the ones that are good prospects for TNM and sort of leave behind the ones that are not. Um, and then just looking at um, the selection process in a bit more detail. Um, I don't know if you can see the numbers, but it's not that important. Um, so if you look at the table uh, on top there, um, you can probably see we have two um, segments for each brand, a reactivation segment and the cross-sell uh, segment. Now the reactivation segment um, is applied to existing customers, so people that have already purchased from TNM, uh, while the cross-sell segment is applied to consumers that have purchased from other brands in the group, but not specifically for, uh, sorry, from TNM. Um, and that is done for, for each, each of the brands. Um, we draw selections from different pools, as we said in, in the beginning. Uh, we start usually with the best customers selections, uh, which are done directly um, by TNM through the single customer view. Uh, and these are then combined with selections from the reactivation pool. Uh, in this case, we say we are picking segments one, two, three. Um, and then again, they're combined with the uh, cross-sell selections from um, the remaining pools of data. This is all sort of merged together, um, but it's also all done um, at the same time from the same platform. So we don't have to export data, exclude data from selections, merge physically files together again. Uh, these uh, segments sit uh, uh, in the single customer view, and therefore one person can pick up um, uh, the, the selections using all these different tools uh, at once and that really reduces the um, delivery time uh, for, uh, for the campaign. So when the um, mailing selections are ready, you know, uh, the catalog drops um, and then that's when we're faced with an, another challenge which is how do we measure and allocate sort of response um, accurately. Uh, and Vicky is going to talk about the challenges that uh, TNM faced from that perspective. Thank you, Michaeli. Um, so, as Michaeli mentioned, we have a few challenges when it comes to measurement. We don't like to make life easy on ourselves, and we certainly don't like to make life easy for Michaeli. Um, we've got a high frequency of contact during the spring season. We mail across all of our brands around 25 different catalogues. We've got half a dozen emails going out every week, and that's on top of any other activity we're doing with sell-off-the-page adverts, um, promotions in the press, and then throw into the mix um, social media as well, and you've really got quite a lot to be looking at. We've got um, the different brands I mentioned, and we like to make sure that every single pound of uh, our income is allocated back to a marketing activity but obviously we don't want to be allocating anything twice. I will let McKaylee take over on how they've uh, 
looked at that problem for <laughs> yeah, us. So, as Vicky said, uh, they don't like to make life easy for us. So we created a quite a sophisticated um, and of complex uh, methodology uh, for, for the matchbacks. Uh, but there are three things that um, I think make this methodology uh, very successful. Uh, and I'm going to focus on those. So the first factor really is the promotional history. So we created a promotional history for each of the households uh, in the TNM database that sits uh, again within the single customer view. So we are able to see exactly uh, which sequence of contacts each household um, has received. And that really allows us to create household level response windows. So we know when a specific cons consumer um, has received the next um, campaign. And therefore, we can sort of quite precisely um, allocate um, responses to different drops. Um, we also use some fractional allocation techniques to share credit between different um, marketing activities. So, and this is particularly helpful when you've got um, households that respond but don't use, uh, say, a media code or a source code. So, for, for example, um, you could have a consumer that um, has received a catalog or multiple catalogs, uh, but also received uh, an email uh, newsletter, for example. Uh, and if that consumer doesn't mention uh, an offer code or um, a, a source code, uh, where do you put this, this, this purchase? So these fractional location techniques really allow us to share the credit, again, between different marketing um, activities and make sure that um, sort of revenue uh, is fairly uh, allocated. Uh, and finally, uh, we created a season-long um, view uh, of, of the results, uh, which really enables us to do things quite easily, test different content frequencies, and, and understand what happens if you send six catalogs versus five catalogs versus you know, three catalogs. Um, and also understand what is the impact of cross-selling on the sort of brand that originally owned um, the, the, the customer. Sometimes it has no impact, you know, the fact that they received uh, promotions from other brands as well. Sometimes it does, so it's important to be aware uh, of these things. Oh, I think you're good. <laughs> So just to summarise um, how we've managed to overcome the uh, challenges that we felt we faced back in 2009 with Abacus's help. We've got a unified view of our customer. It's definitely cleaner. We can see against a single person, regardless of the brands they're ordering from, all of their mailing preferences, all of their purchase history, um, all of their mailing history, which means we've got a much better understanding uh, on all of our customers. We've achieved direct access to our data. We can have better, quicker insights um, by, by using fast apps. Uh, ultimately, it probably leads to more questions for everyone that you answer, but we can get to it ourselves. We are able to make our own data selections for our mailings, which means that we can be much quicker in reacting if there's something that we need to do quickly. Um, and it also means we can, um, our customer service team, as previously mentioned, can access uh, the, uh, all of this information as well, so mailings, mailing preferences. Improved targeting and reduced wastage. We've certainly reduced our mailing volumes. Where we've got a single view of every customer, we've been able to be much more targeted in what we're doing. If we're making a data selection, we can overlay all of the modelling that is uh, the scorings that Abacus have done for us, which means we can cherry pick off the best data. And we also have ability to mail some of our prospecting data quickly. It's already there for us, so we can quickly top up mailing volumes. 
And finally, we've got our season-long cross-brand view of results, as Michaeli's mentioned. Um, and it means that we've got a much better understanding and we can have a play around with the amount of uh, attribution that we give back from different activities to see if it's actually still worth mailing those customers. Thank you very much for your time. <laughs>